Good morning everyone, Aja here from Pandemonium. It is a gorgeous day here at camp. It is supposed to be 76 degrees. There's a slight cool breeze. Feels nice in, this, in the shade, but the sun's a little in intense. It is a very quiet day here at camp. So we thought we would go exploring. The truck is unloaded and the bike is off. Now in the area, there are three more campsites. There are two free ones just like this and one paid. So we thought we'd go check those out just for other options if we wanted to do something else. Let's get everything locked up. Are you sure? Yep, okay. Got my bike locked up. The dog's loaded up and we're ready to go check out these campgrounds. It's not quite spring yet, but it definitely feels like a cool spring day. It's beautiful. Now all these campsites are in the Francis Marion National Forest, and it's in between Georgetown and Charleston, on, off of 17. Right, Ken Dog? Right. <laughs> Memo in her normal position. Sleep. Oh, no. Oh. Uh, is it time for a bug treatment, Memo? She hasn't been itching, and I haven't noticed any ticks, thankfully. Jeff just gave Kellogg a treatment, though. He's been itching like crazy. I usually don't like those treatments because they're poisonous, but, you know, in some areas where it's just ridiculous with fleas and ticks, they need it. I myself use tea tree oil on Moo and I apply it to her probably once a week and that usually does the trick. If you continue on, you can get to the campsite from 17, but this is a shortcut. I don't know if I'd take my RV down this because it is a dirt road. This is Mill Branch 211, Waterhorn Hunt Unit. All right, we're gonna continue on. The gates are open. And like I said, where we're from, it's just shorter to take this way. I guess you could take your RV back down here, but we'll see how rough it gets or if it's smooth. We just went over a pretty narrow bridge. And if you have a wider rig, I probably wouldn't suggest it. But other than that, the road's pretty good. If I didn't mention it, it is about five miles down this dirt road though. This is a second intersection. That was 211C. Oh, look at that nice patch of green grass. <laughs> Weird. So see how it has a lot of water here? Certain areas have been inundated with water. They must have had a lot of showers or rainstorms during the winter. Yeah, just like that area right there. It's another grass area, but it, it is all water. Yeah, I've noticed a lot of soppy areas this season. I, I guess I don't come down here this time of year. This is still landing, and Jeff seems to think that is a boat launch that way. Oh yeah, I see the boat sign. See, on the... Maybe you can launch kayaks and stuff as well. Kellogg's enjoying some me time out the window in the cool breeze. Seems a bit narrow through here. Another stream. Wow, another big grassy area, but that's not sopping wet. Looks like it's a little higher. That's cool. Too bad you can't get into that. It's weird because the rest of it is overgrown vegetation, shrubs, and of course trees. It's nice to see those grassy clearings. So we have about a half a mile left, so not too far. Look, another huge field of grass. It's like someone just plopped a lawn there. Okay, I'm starting to think that that's not natural. Like that was man created, like those were fields at one time. I don't know, there was a lot of them. And that's very unusual for a forest like this. What's this? Elmwood Camp. Okay, we've made it here. This is Elmwood Wildlife Station, South Carolina Wildlife Resource Department, USDA Forest Service. And here it is. 
Yeah, this one has a sign saying make max stay 14 days. Oh, there's a trailer here. Huh. Maybe that's for, for the ranger or the camp host. How cute. Look at that little trailer with the shelter over it. Restricted area, authorized personnel only. They've got a nice cool barn here. This is probably definitely for either the camp host or the ranger. Little outhouse or something. Francis Marion National Forest visitor information. This board here is better than the one where we're at. There's a lot more. There's a map and the rules and regulations, safe camping. I'm not sure if you can make that out. Here is the map of Francis Marion National Forest. All this in the green, it goes up here. It's pretty big. Well, what a beautiful spot this is. There is pit toilets, this big old open area for camping. And this one doesn't have designated camping spots like where we're at. Hello. But there are a few people here, not as busy as where we are. Oh, this is... It is beautiful here. Yeah, very, very much so. I think this spot is harder to get to, but there's only three people camping here. So in a couple days, we might actually come here and camp for a little bit. Looks like someone left some firewood. Kellogg. <laughs> Getting all wrapped up. Don't forget to pack it in and pack it out. What is this? Oh, it's a faucet. So they do have water here. Let's see if it's actually available. <gasps> it is, how awesome. Yeah, the other one doesn't have it. It does, it's just not functioning. This seems to be like a communal fire pit right here. That's really cool. They have the logs cut for seats. Oh, it might be, I don't know, they have firewood here already. I don't know if someone just left it. Huh. Yeah, this is awesome. I'd love to camp here. I actually like this better than the spot we're at. There are only a few sunny spots over there in the far corner of the field. Uh, the rest of it's pretty shaded. It is a small campsite, but wonderful. It's, it's nice. So that's basically it. It's not big, like I said. So we're gonna go to the next campsite and check that out just to get uh, something, another possibility for camping. It does look like it's oh, on it. Like oh yeah. <laughs> Jeff was just pointing out there is lower ground here. It kind of seems like um, a wash or I guess just low land. Oh, that's all flooded out back there. I see the water. So there's some kind of pond back there. It's actually pretty big. It goes from over here. And I don't see how far, but I can see to there. All right, Moo, go ahead, inside. Good girl. People in the South can be so friendly. We spoke to one person there and the other person waved to us. We didn't see the third person. They're probably in their camper. But just in general, I think people are nice in the South. But I, that doesn't run true for everybody. <laughs> we are now on the other road, which is much better and wider. So if you have bigger rigs, I would definitely suggest taking this way. Although there are some low lining trees in that camp area, so if you have an uh, overly large rig, I'm not sure if that camp area will work for you. And this will lead to 17, I believe. Is that right, Jeff? Yeah, okay. Oh, and not, it's not much of a dirt road because it now turns into paved. Okay, cool. When we come here, we might have to bring our rigs around this way. I did check the internet and it is about the same as where we are. It's not great, but there is internet there. Just got on 17, we're heading south towards Charleston. We are gonna go check out the next free camping area, but in between the two is a paid camping area and we thought we would throw that in as a bonus just so it's an option because some people like to plug it. I believe there's full hookups there, obviously, because it's paid.
but we'll check that out when we get there. It's about 11 miles away. On the left-hand side of 17, we just passed an area. They do allow camping there. It is a WMA, so we're not sure if it's water management or wildlife management, but there is camping. But Jeff went online and he couldn't figure out how to... To get a permit. Yeah. Permit required, but no one's there. Right. So that's the problem is, you know, finding out how you actually get the permit to camp there. So this is the road that we're camping off of. There was an old gas station there, but they closed down and they tore it down too. So Jeff said there's a hiking area over here. I actually think I did that. There's one hiking area and there's alligators. It leads to like several ponds or water source and there are alligators back there. I think I had mentioned it before, we are much closer to Charleston than we are Myrtle Beach, because this is in between Georgetown and Charleston. I, you said 36 miles to Charleston from this point here, and I think Myrtle Beach is about an hour. We made it to Rock Hall Recreation Area. Straight ahead of us are the tent camping sites. That is the overflow area, so we can go back there. You want to go check it out real quick? Like I said, this is a fee area. There is a pay kiosk next to the boat ramp. Not a bad little tenting area. It's pretty back here with the trees. Wow, there's actually a lot of tents here. Look, Kellogg, all the tents. Yeah, what a wonderful spot for in my opinion, this is more like for families. Unless you tent camp, then that's cool. But definitely not for RVs. Yeah, oh, that could be a group, yeah. Little tents, like right, that's what I was saying. It's good for families or church groups or youth groups. And I think this is the end of the kind of loop. Right, Jeff was just pointing out that there's no vehicles here, so they might have come in on a bus or either they're out exploring. This is also a trailhead over here. The Palmetto Trail. Palmetto Trailhead. There's the Palmetto Trail that Jeff was speaking of. Goes both ways, one here and one on the other side. Got day use pass, boat ramp is straight ahead, picnic area to the left, and to the right here is the campground. We're just gonna do a drive through, probably knock it out. I see fire pits and grills. They are paved sites. There is water and electric. I see them hooked up. I don't see any sewer though. So there's probably a dump station. Camp host on duty. Welcome campers. Oh, this is a yeah. This is a pretty big area. Did you look up uh, how much it was? No, I didn't get those photos. Okay, I'll have to, I'll look it up and see if we can see how much the price is and I'll put it on the screen. Your destination is on the right. Yeah, pretty nice. There's, um, I think that's probably like a full bathroom. It looks like a bathroom yeah, with showers. Sense, yeah, so not just vault toilets. Yeah, they have quite a few campsites. I believe you probably have to make a reservation for this area, though. There's an empty one right there. Yeah, there were a few of them. Yeah. Oh, it says reserved, though. And there is the dump station. Wow, look at all the water here. I wonder if that's from the dump station. Probably not. There's more tent camping spots. There's the waterway there, and it's marshland. The ocean is that direction. There are more tenting sites here, I think. And on this side with Kellogg and Jeff, there's more sites. They're pretty big because there's fifth wheels, class A diesel pusher, um, you know, pull behind trailer. I like that A-frame over there, that pop-up, it's pretty cool. And reserve, so I'm taking it you have to probably go online and reserve your spot here. So we will get more information. There's a water faucet there, probably for tent campers. I want to get out and check the sign. So this is the camp host spot, camp host on duty. 
And it says dump station still closed. Last check, 3.12, 9 a.m. So maybe that was overflowing there. So here's where it says the sites are $28. Walk-ins, openings, 20 bucks. Huh, oh, if you reserve a site, wow, it's cheaper to just um, come here. And they have one site available for one night. It's number two. The tent sites are full. And this is still part of the Francis Marion National Forest. Oh, look at all the fish here in South Carolina. <laughs> Pretty cool. Okay, and another map. This one doesn't have the forest in green though. I think you can kind of make it out, it's the blue. And on the other side is just the map of Buck Hall Recreation Area. I think this is where we came in. And we went around this way here and came around. There are 14 RV sites here and one, two, five tent sites. Oh, I thought this was all tenting, but I guess not. And the fee station. So there's biking, boat launch, RV camping, dogs on leash, drinking water, accessibility for handicap, hiking, information, parking, picnic, restrooms, tenting sites. And there is a little roundabout parking here I think this is for day use, and this is where the boat launch was. Oh, here's the Palmetto Trail. So it cut across the road, so it seems like it starts here at this parking area, walk across, and continues out this way towards the water. Well, unfortunately, they didn't have a price for the tent camping, so I'm not sure. It's probably like 10 or $15, if I had to guess. Probably 10 But anyways, um, you've got the information. You can always go online and check it out. Oh, how beautiful. This is the boat launch. Looks like a lovely day on the water. It'd be nice to be out on the boat. Oh, there's a strong current there. I can see it. And they do have a fishing pier and cleaning station as well. So remember, this is like a state park. If you want to come here during the day, there is a day use fee. Jeff and I were just discussing it and we figured out probably why it's cheaper if you just come here because if they have an opening between reservations they're trying to fill that spot and that $20 site was only for one night so that's probably what's happening. We're going to go ahead and head to the next free camp area which is about five miles away. So we'll be heading further south on 17 towards Charleston. Kellogg, you sleeping? Huh? Sleepy, sleepy. He's just like Mumu. Anytime the car's going, he's usually sleeping unless the window's open. We made it to our turn. This is Twin Pond Rifle Range, Francis Marion. And there's a ranger station here. How far down the road? Four and a half miles. We just passed, I think it was a t Twin Pond Rifle Range. It's halfway in between the campground and the main road. So that's the Wamba Trail, or Cycle Trail to the right. And that's um, not too far from where we're camping. Oh, this is paved. We're about a half a mile down this road and then we'll meet the or we'll get to the campground. Look at all the green grass. Okay, we've made it to the Half Creek Trailhead here in Francis Marion. And it said there was camping here, but as you can see, it's just a parking lot. I mean, we've camped in a parking lot before, but I'd prefer not to. I mean, I, I don't mind them for overnighting and stuff, but if we're gonna find a camp spot or a campsite to camp for a week or so, I'd prefer it not be a parking lot, so. Oh, hold on, let's check the sign. No camping or sleeping in vehicles. Google does say online that this is a campsite, but maybe it's just for tents. I see there's someone backpacking. This is another Francis Marion. This is a bigger one, so you can see all the green is the Francis Marion. Hmm. Oh, there is a big water source there. And here is 
the ocean. Oh wait, actually this says it is Bulls Bay. Well darn, I thought we were gonna be able to check out two free campsites today, but this one is the total bust fail. Yeah, so Jeff just looked at it. It is camping, but only tent camping. Yeah, so, oh well, we had to check it out. All dispersed campsites must be 50 feet away from water and trails, as well as half a mile away from any road or parking lot, including the trailhead parking lot. Any dispersed camping in the area requires a dispersed camping permit issued by the... Oh, I see. So this also does require a permit. It's free and it's tent camping. And of course you can't forget about the awesome trail. So Jeff just looked it up and we're about 14 miles away from our campsite. And since we're here and with the dogs, we thought we would take them for a little stroll. Okay, we came to the other side. This is a clearer map. This is us here at Halfway Creek. And then up here through the trail is the, where, we're at, where we're currently located, which is Honey Hill. And then Elmwood is right there. So Elmwood's really close this way. But if you have to go down, then around, it's much longer to get to Elmwood. So I'm just noticing some of the little smaller areas in the Francis Marion Forest. They have the little Wamba Swamp Wilderness, Wamba Swamp Wilderness again. Oh God, Hellhole <laughs> Bay Wilderness. I don't know if I'd want to go there. Oh, and they have a Santee Experimental Forest. I just noticed that way up here is the Goulard Lake Scenic Area. I don't see the lake though. Let's go check this out. Oh, I actually think I see the tent camping area up ahead. I guess they just have the dispersed camping along the trail. This is a camp area. It seems like they burnt a pallet. Hmm. Wow. Okay. We'll just continue on for a little bit. No need to waste such a beautiful day when there's a lovely trail to walk on. Oh, more spots. Yeah, I'd say they have a few nice, really shaded spots for tents, but it doesn't seem like anybody's really using them. Okay, are we on another confusing trail head? It splits here. But this looks like the main path. We'll just continue on there. Maybe that's just to another campsite. Yeah, definitely a lot of neat spots here for tent campers. That would be fun, but we did leave all our tenting stuff at home. Plus, you know, I wouldn't want to leave my RV just somewhere or anywhere. So Jeff just looked up how far the trail is. He said it goes on for miles. Well, yeah, it kind of parallels the road, looks like. So yeah, we'll just go for a little bit. Like I said, it's such a wonderful day and we're in nice shaded woods. Oh, I see two huge mud puddles. Huh. Can we get around those? They seem to encompass the trail. Uh, this is kind of a big puddle here. Um, I guess we can jump over there. Yeah, let's try it. Okay, here, here Jeff, you hold this. I'm going to jump over. <laughs> Okay, let's try this. Ooh, it's mushy, Moo Moo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> come on, Moo. Wait, hold on. Oh, get it? Oh, yeah, mushy, mushy. Just this part, though. Okay, we made it. <laughs> and it seems like the rest of the trail, well, from what I can see, the rest of the trail is dry. Oh, they have a wonky, looks like a kind of old boardwalk. What does it say? Eagle protected huh, by the clan Brennan. Oh, it's a troop. Maybe Boy Scouts or something. Huh? Yeah. Water's actually flowing here. There's a stream that just goes on into the woods. So I think more of the camping is probably up front. I don't, I haven't noticed anything back here. You do want to be careful with all this thick vegetation. As we were coming up here, we noticed there was a dead wild boar on the side of the road. So yeah, wouldn't want to run up on one of those. They usually stay away from people though, if they hear people talking or coming. We were just discussing it. That's the case for most animals. They usually try to avoid humans.
You enjoying the trail, Mumu? Yeah? Jeff was just pointing out, and I noticed them too, there's a lot of trails, these little tiny trails that go off into the woods. Probably a wildlife trail. Another trail that's clearly marked. They have those white, kind of diamond-shaped metal plaques on the trees. It's really beautiful back here. Okay, well, maybe it's not the right time of the season for this trail. Seems awful wet. And I do not think we're gonna get around that. Not to mention it's very soppy past it. Okay. We see any mosquito. Oh, look at all the mosquitoes. They're probably laying their eggs. Do you see any mosquito larvae swimming around? No, but there are the mosquitoes. Okay. Bye, mosquito hole. Oh, look, it is flowing though, Jeff. So it's a stream that comes, I'm surprised they didn't put a boardwalk over this because it's coming out of here and it's continuing on over here. Well, that's a shame. We did get somewhat of a walk in, but I would like to go a little further. It's such a thickly wooded area. You don't always come across these spots. Right, Kellogg? Right. <laughs> you can kiss the camera, huh? Another thing that could be adding to all the moisture that we were just discussing is that it is an El Nino year. So it's supposed to be a wetter winter. Doesn't feel like winter though, I will say. It is getting close to spring. What is it, two weeks away? Yeah. Something like that. Puppies on the boardwalk. Yeah, they need more of these in this area. Yeah, you made it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, dang it. <laughs> ah, look, Momo, I got my shoe all muddy. There's that dead boar right there. Ugh. Oh, there, oh, there was another one. Well, we made it back to camp and what a wonderful day it was exploring. I decided to make us some lunch. Made us two tuna salad bowls. There's a bed of lettuce with tuna salad, some garlic bread, and a pickle. Here you go. Enjoy. Oh, he's like, share the tuna with me. Okay, time to enjoy some lunch. Looks like Jeff already is. <laughs> you did say you like tuna, sal uh, tuna salad, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yum, yum. Looks good. Well, I really appreciate y'all hanging out with us today. And hopefully we'll see you next time here on Pandemonium to see what craziness we get into. Bye for now, y'all.